listening tonight. I really appreciate you. Um, uh, before we get started with souls with stories, let's pray. Father, I praise you, and I give you thanks for what you're about to say, and help me to espouse truth uh, that you would um, that you would have me speak, Lord. Help me be an oracle of you. Use my mouth and my words to send forth your word in such a powerful way that it delivers and changes lives, oh God. I pray that you will just be on me in such a wonderful way that that um, souls will be healed, restored, delivered. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi guys. I was um, thinking about um, uh, preaching online and the whole preaching thing. And I've heard a lot of preachers say that they get nervous because of um, they don't know if the sermon will hit right and whatever. They don't know if they can expose uh, the truth that God is showing them. Because I can only speak for myself as a preacher. Uh, with me, oftentimes God shows you so much that you, you're not sure that you can um, uh, adequately describe what he shows you in your word in the word or in your dreams uh most time you can't adequately describe because he because he he shows you so much and it's so big and it's hard to put into words um so i was thinking about um preaching online and preaching in general and um i I've been guilty of uh, looking at the numbers saying, oh, that didn't hit well. It's only eight people that watch that, or only ten people that watch that, or, or woohoo, 30 people watch that. And I got like six likes for that, and I've been guilty of this. And the Lord's been saying to me, don't look at the clicks and the likes and the numbers as, you know, any anything for you. Uh, look at that, that as eight souls with stories. Because he broke it down to me this way. He said, everybody has a story. Every person that is watching you right now and will watch you in the future has a story and for them to uh, allow you to infiltrate their story in any way is an honor and he wants me to say to the general public not just um not just preachers look out for the story in your life and the life of others and what i mean by story i don't mean something fiction or whatever look out for the life um challenge or the life circumstance of people and stop seeing them as people just to benefit you or your cause or your sermon or your day or whatever Look at them as people with a story. So, to be able to affect even one story is a great honor for people to allow you in their space enough to um, affect their story is, is a great privilege. And I think if we understood that, We'd be kinder to people. We'd be more loving to people. If, if we say, 
if we understood that being around people, letting them into your light, letting uh, uh, them letting you into their lives, into their homes, with their children, um, you know, it's an honor and a privilege. And if we would look at things that way, not only as pre uh, preachers here, but regular regular life, just people, we would see just amazing change in their lives. Like, because we don't like to say this, but but um. Um, we in the Western world, we're very selfish, and we often think of ourselves. So, if you're a preacher and a sermon hits, you tend to think, because it's your worth and, you, and your study time, you tend to think it's about you, but no, honey, it's about the story the stories you are affecting the, the lives that God is using you to change. And I think if you really look into the eyes of people when you talk to them, if you would really be present in the moment, you'd be shocked about what you learn. Um, Instead of, um, back to, back to preachers again, instead of when you're preaching, uh, looking at to see who's responding to you or whatever, look around, um, and anyone who is not looking what, what you would think is plugged in, Anyone who's got their arms crossed or looking upset, ask the Lord to to infiltrate their story with His presence, because any sermon that any preacher preaches is not about Him. I said a few weeks ago, um, anything, everything I preach is for me. And that is true to a point, but for like it comes, uh, it comes from my experience. It's it helps me when I'm preaching it, but at the end of the day, it's really for um, me and for others because I'm included in the others and. Sometimes when you're preaching something, you're preaching it for other people, but the Lord is really meaning it for you. And you're so focused on how other people are responding to it, and you're not really, you're not really thinking about how, how it, the sermon is actually changing your life. So instead of looking around the auditorium, thinking that, oh, that person is not responding to my sermon, just just say a silent prayer for that person because they may be going through something at that moment that they can't hear you. They may be struggling with their kids. They may be struggling with their marriage, they may be on the brink of suicide and death, uh, either uh, let it be either uh, spiritual death, physical death, they may be grieving, maybe all kinds of stuff, and you're there as a vessel uh, to lift, to help God lift the burden over your life, and yes, their lives. And I was thinking about this particular uh, preacher. Uh, he's a preacher I really admire and all that stuff. And I was thinking about this today, 
as I was waiting for my medical supplies. Um, I was thinking um, when I first uh, knew about this particular person, there was another preacher that I was uh, really looking for. That other preacher had um, come out with a book and I was looking for interviews on the book because I really looked to, to see uh, verse interviews and not only about the book, but I looked to see um, how, how the person, you know, about the book and about the person. So I found this interview with this um, with this preacher that I was looking for and uh, but the interview was being done by a preacher that I've never heard of before. I was like, who is this person? <laughs> I've never heard of him before. So after the interview was over, I I began to type in uh, the I typed in that person person's name. Let's be real. I I selected it and cut and pasted it. So I began to get this person's sermons and this other person that I've never heard of before, his sermons, I got connected to his church, and I got uh, really connected, and I'm like, Lord, this doesn't make any sense, because this person is totally different than I am from the outside, and we are just total opposites, like, totally. And I said, what is it? Like, what is it? And I, I couldn't, I couldn't grasp what it was. It was not just good preaching, because I've heard good preaching all my life. And I, I was, uh, yeah, I was like, what is this? Why am I so addicted to this church and what th this person's ministry and, you know, seeing things and stuff. And then I saw, I saw a sermon series that this person did. And I saw, I saw many sermon series that this person did. But the first full sermon series that I saw live um, he was preaching, 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 and people were like, yay, this is so good, that was so good. Um, but the camera panned to his eyes, and I was like, okay, now I understand, because, um, you know, sometimes you preach stuff. And you believe it for other people, but you don't believe it for you. And that has always been my issue. Um, like that, uh, that I, I'm just too, you know, I'm just too uh, broken to preach or whatever. And, and as I saw this person and looked into his eyes. This pastor is one of the most well-known pastors in the world. And I was like, oh, what is it? And I saw it in his eyes and it's this, and it was the same thing that I was going through at this moment. Now the sermon wasn't about what I saw in his eyes, but I saw in his eyes the same kind of doubt, the same kind of what the heck am I doing here? When I, when when people were were like up on their feet and out of their seats, uh, the Lord really caused me in that moment to see just beyond uh, the pastor and the global ministry that everybody saw, and that was wonderful. And God, 
uh, gave me a chance to see that person's brokenness and a bit of that person's story. And I've, um, and the other day, now, now, I've been watching this same person for about three years. And the other day, um, he was preaching again. So, this was about three years ago when I, when I first saw this sermon series. And the other day, he was preaching again. And I looked into his eyes, and I, and I finally, finally felt like you finally believe what you're preaching. And I'm like, me too, but it took me a while to get there. So it was like a kinship moment, and that was so cool. See, like, so everybody sees a person on the outside, but God allowed me a little window to see what this person was going through on the inside, although they said nothing about it. But I just felt, when I first saw this sermon, I just felt, while well, everyone was standing up, I just wanted to give him a hug and say, Oh, me too! It's okay! I feel that way too! Anyway, um, so, so that's what I mean. The stories of people, you never know. <coughs> so, don't look at clicks and likes. Look at the stories that you are affecting. Because if you can, um, affect one person's story, whether it be a co-worker, whether it be a um, member of a church, whether it be a what, whatever, if you can affect one person's story, that's worth it all. Because we see numbers, but God sees people behind the numbers. God sees stories. So, if God has sent you to someone's life to affect their story in a positive way, that is worth everything. That is worth a, more than a million clicks and likes. Because the thing with clicks and likes is anybody can click and like something, but not everybody can affect somebody's story in a positive way. So, keep in mind that everybody has a story. And if the Lord gives you a window or a chance to affect one person's story, that is an amazing thing. And you shouldn't take that for granted. He said, don't despise the the day of small beginnings. But I would say don't despise the small at all. What what God sees as precious, what God sees as significant, we don't see. We want the big stages. We want to pre we want to um preach to millions. We want to, you know, all that stuff. But when God is saying, I need you to just preach to the one. I need you to do it for the eight. I need you to do it for the fourteen. I need you to do it for whoever's watching because uh what you do for me it's always significant, whatever it is. So if you're working in a donut shop and you're seeing customers, smile at them. Say, good morning. Welcome. How may I help you? Um, you know, if you're, if you're even stopped by a cop, Say good morning, officer. I'm I'm sorry for speeding. Uh, you know, um, 
know that that response may affect that person's story in a positive way. I've heard several times that my smile in the morning for those people who uh, come in to do my personal care and to get me up, uh, that smile in the morning just really gets them off to a good start because some people are not as pleasant in the morning. And they're like, you know, that really helps. So I'm affecting their story, and that's a big thing. It's a big thing when somebody trusts you to affect their story in a positive, positive way. You are affecting people's stories daily. But the question is, how are you affecting their stories? Are you affecting their stories in a positive way or a negative way? Um, do they smile when they see you or do they gross and gr grump when they see you? When they see them on their phone, do they get excited or do they like, oh no, this person's going to bring me down? So affect people's stories in a positive way. And all those things the Lord will repay. All those positive smiles and all those positive, positive things that um, you are giving to people, the Lord will repay in His time. It may seem like a little thing, but it really is not. Look past, your st past yourself to the people around you. And if you haven't been impacting their story in a positive way, the Lord says, start today. It's them too late to start. Start today by making that phone call. Start today by baking those cookies and leaving them on the porch. Start today by doing something kind. Affect their stories in a positive way and know that it's not about you. It's about what God is doing for someone through you. Um, that's what it's about, and affecting people's lives and affecting their stories in a positive way. Um, there, be someone's e true Hollywood uh, story moment. Uh, there's a show called E! True Hollywood Story. And what it is, is it, it shows the lives of a celebrity and their family and friends talk about it. But it, it always starts off, this person was down and out and, and they couldn't eat, they couldn't sleep, they were, you know, uh, they were totally broke. And then, this happened and changed it all. So, be that and then for someone. Be that, be that turning point for someone. Let God use you as someone's turning point. Because uh, He wants to. He wants to use you to affect someone's story in a positive way. If you would just let Him do it. And stop focusing on yourself and ask God to show you uh, who whose story you need to be affecting. Ask God to show you what you can do to make somebody's life richer. Whether it be a kind of word, whether it be a little gift, whether whatever it may be. Ask God to show you the, the story behind the mask or the story behind the soul because there, there are every soul, every person has a story and sometimes we don't see the story behind the soul. But if you can affect the story, then automatically you affect the soul of the person, you affect the spirit of the person. 
whether it be in a positive way or negative way. So thank you guys so much for listening to me and being with me. I really appreciate it. Bye. One of the ways you can affect somebody's story is by telling them that you care. It's by telling them that that they're loved. It's by telling them that you're there for them. By telling them they're not alone. That could really um, turn somebody's story. I was singing this song the other day, and I'll sing it uh, while I'm going out. It's called You Were Loved. Uh, by Whitney Houston and also Winona Judd did a version, so it goes. We all want to make our place in this world. We all want our voices to be heard. Everyone wants a chance to be someone. We all have dreams we need to dream. It's better than any star you can reach. It's when you reach and find you found someone. You hold this world for sprites the same. The greatest gift this life can bring. If you can look back and know you were loved, you were loved by someone, and touched by someone, held by someone, and summoned to someone, loved somebody, touched somebody's heart along the way. You can look back and say you were loved. You can have diamonds in your hands, have all the riches in the land, but without love, then it If someone cares that you're when someone finds the world in your eyes, that's when you know that you have all you need. You hold this world for priceless price, the speed of treasure in this life. If you can look back and know you in love. You were loved by someone, and touched by someone, held by someone, and summoned to someone, loved somebody, touched somebody's heart along the way. You can look back and say, you were loved. So many roads that you can take, whatever way you go, don't take that road alone, it's better you to know, you were loved by someone, and touched by someone, held by someone, and summoned to someone, loved somebody, 
Touch the man's heart along the way. You can look back and say, You did okay. You were not. So remember to tell the world you are alive. Bye, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. You were loved by someone, touched by someone, held by someone, did something to someone, loved somebody, touched somebody's heart along the way. You can look back and say you are not. See, that's affecting somebody's life in a positive way, somebody's story in a positive way. That's, that's about taking your eyes off yourself and uh, loving someone, touching someone. Um, meaning something to someone. And at the end of the day, that's what the Lord put us to be here for each other and to help each other and to affect each other's stories in a positive way. And no that at the end of the day, we may be the only Bible that most people read, so let it be a good chapter that they see. Let it be a chapter that lifts them, makes them stronger, not kills them and makes them depressed, or makes them want to give up on life, fight for the dreams that God has for them. You can either destroy people's life with, you can either destroy people's story or you can enhance people's story. You can either destroy or build up people's story. Which will it be? I want to be a story builder, not a story destroyer. I want to add life to everyone I meet, not death. I want to bring forth things by what I say. Um, not, not cancel what God has for them with my negative spirit. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Bye.